Hi and good evening on this lovely Friday, uh, the September the 18th at roughly 5 p.m. I'm your host Gina Hoske and I'm going to uh, talk to you uh, today about what I've been up to, what the next steps will be with regards to Octoprint development. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the stats uh, of the anonymous anonymous usage <laughs> tracking plugin, and uh, then usually we would have a short Q and A segment. The only problem is that no one sent in Q and A, uh, or rather Q <laughs> Qs to A uh, during this segment uh, before. So yeah, unless someone throws something into the live chat, the Q and A segment will be very very short indeed. But yeah, so just so you know, this is the goal of this octoprint on air number 34. Um, yeah, as always, those of you watching this live and not the recording that are cut together later and publish, uh, there's a live chat on the right of you on uh, desktop and below on mobile. Uh, and I'll keep an eye on that. For me, it's over there um, in case you have any questions or something uh, so that I know about them and can answer them in a timely manner. Yeah, so. Let's get it started, I guess. Um, first of all, as I said, what I've been up to. Um, the most prominent uh, bits uh, that I worked on since we last saw each other at the end of July, I think, uh, was that, yeah, I released one for one and then also one for two, only less than 48 hours or so later. Um, yeah, so the reason for that uh, hotfix release was that 141 said they shipped with three bugs that went undiscovered until uh, release day, basically, or, or rather until after release. Uh, one of these was that installing plugins larger than, uh, I think, one megabyte or something would fail. The other was that there were some, uh, if you had some files in the watched folder and you have uh, polling configured, so, so um, active polling uh, then of the watch folder, then the server would run into an issue due to a, um, uh, due to a change in behavior in, a, in an updated third party dependency. And the third problem was that installing plugins from a URL where the, uh, requ uh, the response headers of the server from which the plugin was being uh, downloaded and installed had a specific structure uh, ran into issues as well. So that was severe enough to say, okay, we need to, um, we need to, or I need to roll out a, a hotfix release of this. So I fitted it together, and yeah, around forty-eight hours later, I released one for two. Um, overall, apart from these three bugs uh, that one for one shipped with, um, yeah, the rollout appears to have been quite smooth. Uh, only the usual stuff, some installations causing issues here and there, usually either caused by uh, yeah corrupt installations because of uh, yeah, incomplete shutdowns. Side note, please always first shut down your Pi through the Octoprint menu for that, then wait a bit and then pull power. Do not just blindly pull power. This is how you corrupt your file system and then stuff like, like Octoprint updates will fail or Octoprint will just stop working. Yeah, so it was uh, stuff like this again, then some cases where we never found out what the problem was in the in the community forums because the person reporting in with a problem never reported the necessary information to figure stuff out. Um, but yeah, all in all, it appears to be the usual suspects. And um, so, yeah. That was that. Um, considering that the whole hotfix was necessary due to three um, bugs that would have probably been found very early if we had had more release candidate testers, let me once again reiterate, and I know I do this pretty much in every one of these, um, uh, that it is really, really important that uh, as many as possible uh, of you uh, help test the release candidates. The thing is that I do my very best to test every version that I put out, obviously, but I have different workflows than you. I have different hardware than you. I have different uh, firmware in my test systems than you. And um, yeah, I did it. And I also do, cannot test every possible plugin combination under the sun as well. So uh, the thing is that how no matter how much time I put into testing stuff, there will always be something that I miss simply because I do not even 
get the idea to look in that direction. And uh, yeah, usually after every release, uh, one or two or three of you <laughs> chime in and say, oh, by the way, this is broken now. And I'm like, okay, I've never used Octoprint in this way before. Um, I can fix this, no problem, but it would be nice to know about stuff like this beforehand. So this is where release candidates uh, come in. So please, if you feel comfortable running something that is not yet uh, deemed stable and might contain bugs and are not afraid to potentially having to manually roll back through SSH or uh, other kind of terminal access, then please consider helping test the release candidates. It, uh, it, uh, yeah, it really helps and it is uh, of utter importance for the stability of Octoprint releases and the, yeah, the bug freeness, so to speak. The more testers, the less bugs will be in the final end result. Um, and uh, right after this final release of 142 and uh, then monitoring uh, everything a bit more, a couple of days more to make sure that everything was fine, I did what I had planned to do for a long time and what was also desperately needed and took some time off. Recharged the batteries, slept a lot, I finished The Witcher 3 <laughs> in the time as well. Um, yeah, obviously, contrary to uh, last year, for example, there was no traveling involved this time because like <clears throat> Corona pandemic and all that. So I stayed put here at home, uh, did a nice staycation. And uh, frankly, considering that the peak infection uh, or the peak in infection rates here in Germany recently uh, yeah, was at least in the most part uh, or in a, in a large part attributed to people returning from vacation from where they got uh, from where they brought back some infections. Uh, I really wish more people had chosen that approach, but yeah, okay. Not everyone can maybe, not everyone has the option, but uh, yeah, for me, it it felt like the sensible thing to not travel and stay put and yeah, not give this bloody virus even the slightest chance to spread further. Right, so... Um, around a bit over two weeks ago i got back from my vacation from my staycation and uh, yeah i was greeted with a couple of pull requests in my inbox which was a nice change usually i just find um bug reports when i get back from vacation and then have to spend like three weeks or something uh, slowly working through everything and sifting through everything that accumulated but uh, this time it was a really pleasant surprise to see that uh, yeah there were some bug reports but there were also pull requests that fixed the bug reports so uh really really huge thanks to everyone who who um pushed something in my direction uh and uh i um merged them obviously and uh, they are now also on maintenance and ready for 150. Um, then another thing that happened in only last week I think um, this is not something that I did per se but I was involved a bit in it and I want to yeah, promote it a bit here. Um, you might have seen a blog post uh, show up on the Octo blog and also pushed to your Octoprint instance to tell that told you that uh, there's now a Python 3 upgrade script that you can run in order to migrate your Octoprint installation to a, a Python 3 virtual environment. And this is a script written by Charlie Powell. And he tested it quite extensively over the past couple of months. And we finally decided, uh, or rather he asked me if we could pull out, uh, put out a, a blog post about that. So now, and to make it more public. And uh, this is what we did. And uh, yeah, this script, uh, or rather Charlie in, in general has been a huge help. And this script is also going to be a huge help and already is um, because yeah, it is now a really, really easy method to get your Octoprint on uh, Octopi 017 uh, migrated to Python 3. It also supports manual installations, but it requires a minimum Python, system-wide Python version install of uh, Python 3.6. Which only Octopi 017 already ships with, which is why we, uh, um, yeah, agreed on limiting the requirements uh, of this script to that instead of trying to update um, the the system wide Python install during upgrade. Because yeah, the the thing with that is that uh, I've uh, over the past year or so uh, I've I've observed some issues with this. So virtual environments tend to die. All of a sudden, when you do that under Raspbian, I have no idea if this is a general issue with Debian or 
even Linux, uh, frankly, I've uh, it's been a while since I manually tried updating system-wide Python installs and then took a closer look at my uh, virtual environments on this on a Linux system. I do it do it on Windows all the time, but that's different. And um, yeah, so this is why the recommendation is also in case that you do run an older Octopi version and want to migrate to Python 3 to please first do a backup of your current Octoprint uh, configuration, which you can do by the bundled plug uh, backup plugin, uh, flash a new version of Octopi and then restore the backup and then upgrade to Python 3 because yeah, this is just um, going to be so much nicer. <laughs> than uh, trying to manually upgrade to Python 3 on older instances. Yeah, and um, so when we went live with this blog post on the Octoblog, uh, I think it quickly became probably one of the most commented on one uh, commented on ones that were ever published on the Octoblog. And um, I've been monitoring the uh, things there here, uh, the comments that went in there. And um, yeah, from what I can see, a lot of people simply do not read instructions, which sadly does not surprise me at all, because this is something that I'm quite familiar with already with Octoprint, but please, 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 when you plan to use this upgrade script, then please read the instructions that come with it. Um, read the blog post, read the readme of the script, because it tells you all this stuff like minimum requirement, what to do in case of a problem, um, also how to manually do the stuff that this thing does, um, requires, uh, so how to manually update your, 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 your Python version and also why this is a bad idea and all that. So yeah, it really, I, I can only really recommend again and again, 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 always read at least a readme if you use something because yeah, that really helps. Um, yeah, and if you are in doubt about this, uh, yeah, if, if you have an older version, as I said, better just backup, restore, flash, uh, uh, backup, backup, flash, restore in that order, backup, flash, restore, upgrade instead of trying to do the manual thing because eh, it's just fiddly. But with Octopi 017, this script just works perfect. And with uh, manual installs on the current, uh, on, a, on a current Python version, yeah, that too. Okay, uh, I, I just saw that there is a wall of text waiting for me in the live chat. So I'm just quickly going to read through that. Uh, yeah, Yander just asked if uh, there is a way to change back from an RC to the old stable release within the web, web interface. So usually um, if you have selected a release candidate, a release channel, so maintenance RCs or devil RCs, you have updated to a, to a release candidate and then you uh, switch back to the stable channel, it should ask you to downgrade. If this does not work anymore, then this is a bug. And then in that case, I would ask you to please open a bug report. Um, so that I can look into it because probably I will already have forgotten it again after this live stream ends. Um, yeah, because, um, yeah, brain, lots of stuff to hold in there all the time. Stuff just slips through if it doesn't end up in the bug tracker. Always when you encounter something that doesn't work, bug report, please. Okay. Um, next, what I, what, what I did more. Um, so, uh, if you're subscribed to this, uh, this this YouTube channel here, you uh, probably saw something pop up about a live stream earlier this week. And this was not this one, but actually, uh, yeah, a new Octoprint code and chat that I did on uh, September the 15th, so on, on Tuesday. Um, yeah, that was something that was long, long overdue. And I did uh, I had a long break in those things. I started them during the, the during, yeah, basically during the beginning of lockdown here in Germany. And um, yeah, did them every time that I found something that would be interesting or fun to do on a live stream. And um, yeah, I, I hadn't found something like that in a long while. Um, so I 
figured it might be time now. And um, yeah, during this live stream, I uh, yeah it was the usual thing. I just coded on Octoprint, had an eye on the chat, talked to you all. And um, what I did actually did on Octoprint uh, during this live stream was that I implemented support for version ranges in plugin notifications. Uh, that uh, pluginstall.octoprint.org can push to your install, and that will make the work of the plugin repository maintainers, maintainers myself included, uh, very much easier in the future. So that was a feature that got realized during a live stream. Yet another one of these, and uh, yeah, that's it's usually a bit weird sitting there having like I think the peak number of people watching was something like thirty or forty. Um, having these many people basically look over your shoulder and um, seeing everything that you do in the code and uh, also how you react to it because I also obviously have a webcam pointed at me during that uh, and yeah it's a bit weird but it's also I think it's educational for all of us <laughs> and myself included because uh, it, it, it forces me to um, vocalize my, my, my thought processes so that hopefully uh, the people watching it uh, can also follow why I'm doing something and uh, yeah it's also nice to sometimes just get ideas from the live chat about how to do something easier or to do it in the first place and to to get live suggestions how to make a feature even better so that is really great and I hope to be doing those again uh, uh, a bit more often uh, obviously it, it always depends on whether I can find something that is yeah, suited to be live streamed. Uh, I really do not want to do something like me two hours uh, trying to figure out a really, really obscure race condition or something. And in the end, the, 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 there is no progress at all. We just have looked at the code for two hours and wondered why something breaks or doesn't break at points. And yeah, I think that would be very frustrating for all of us uh, <laughs> to watch and to experience. So this is stuff that I rather do on my own with uh, loud music and potentially also a trip to the punching bag here and there, but yeah. Um, okay, so what else did I do? Because I'm not yet finished with this list of stuff. Um, yeah, as I mentioned uh, earlier, I already merged some stuff into the maintenance branch, some PRs that I got uh, for for in preparation for 150, and I also did some own work uh, towards what is going to be the next maintenance release. And first of all, those of you who have followed Octoprint for a while will notice weight maintenance release, but the second number in the versioning, versioning uh, scheme changes uh, what's up here. Um, yeah, so uh, after this hotfix release and having to once again go through quite a number of tickets where I said, yeah, that will be in 142, and then 142 turned out to be a hotfix release that did not include this, uh, I decided, okay, it's time to go uh, to a proper semantic versioning version scheme. So from now on, uh, maintenance releases will always increase the the second number in the in the version. So in case of 142, we have a 1, which is the major, we have a uh, 4, which is the um, minor, and we have a 2, which is the patch. That this, this is how you usually call these things in semantic versioning. And so far for maintenance releases, I, re I increased patch and I'm going to switch to increasing um, minor because um, yeah, that just makes things easier. I, I know that the next maintenance release now will be 1.5.0. Once that is out, the next maintenance release will be 1.6.0 and so on and so on. And I also know that if there is any hotfix required for 1.5.0, it will be 1.5.1, then 1.5.2, then 1.5.3. I hope we never get to that point, but you get my drift. And um, yeah, the devil release, the next one, will increase major. So it will be 2.0. Um, and this will also be the release that drops Python 2 support, uh, which coincides nicely with the fact that we now increase major because that means uh, backwards incompatibility is no longer a big, big, huge blocker. So yeah, this is what's going to happen. So 150 will be the next maintenance release. And uh, what I already worked on there is uh, there were some bug fixes for the plugin manager, the watch folder and the backup functionality built into Octoprint, which I took care of. 
Uh, I'm currently still in the process of trying to hunt down a client-side memory leak, which only appears to reproduce in Chrome and Chromium-based browsers, which yeah makes this a bit weird. Um, I narrowed down on it, I think, and it seems to be related to requests, but I'm so, so to actual uh, uh, requests to the to the to the backend server, but I'm not entirely sure why and why this only happens in Chrome. But yeah, so this is something that I will probably have to spend some more time on in order to, yeah, if not solve it, at least put in enough work around so it's no longer a problem because I'm actually not sure I'm able to solve it. I cannot see any actual leak hacking ha happening on my side. Uh, the only things that I see is that for some reason Chrome keeps on reserving more and more memory, but the 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 heap inside the actual application, so the, the stuff that I control stays pretty much um, constant. So yeah, that, this is really weird. Um, so yeah, this is something that I'm not looking forward to having to debug more, but uh, yeah, I can't help it and it needs to be done. Um, then something else that I put in, I think earlier this week is, uh, yeah, 150 will ship with the new event generated by the backup plugin on backup creation. And I saw that Jim Neal, uh, yeah, the, the guy with the many plugins, so to speak, he who has many plugins, he who has almost all plugins, um, is uh, already busy using that new event uh, in order to build a plugin which will allow you to automatically upload any backups that have been created to your Google Drive. So awesome work. Um, I'm really looking forward to welcome that in the plugin repository. Uh, it will require 1.5.0, but still, uh, yeah, this is going to be a nice addition. I think that will help a lot of people. So huge thanks to Jim. Also, hello, Jim. Jim is in, a li in the live uh, chat. Um, what else? Yeah, so uh, there are uh, two things which will make my life and the life of the repository maintainers easier, and but also yours. Uh, you might have noticed uh, a couple of notice notifications popping up in your Octoprint recently due to maintainers having changed on some plugin you have installed and then being asked to reinstall said plugin from the plugin repository in order to get the new version that points its update to the to the new maintainers uh, repository. Yeah, and this semi manual step where you need to still um, uh, yeah, reinstall it from the repository. This is something that was, yeah, n it was a bit annoying to myself as well. Uh, and it felt so yeah, a bit a bit klutzy. And so this is going to be different uh, going forward. Um, so what I did today, actually, so this is like really, really hot off the presses, <laughs> is I, I built, I built in a mechanism into the software update mechanism inside Octoprint, which will, uh, fetch some overlay, uh, configuration from the plugin repository, uh, for plugins that you have installed for which stuff changed. So for example, if you have the filament plugin, a uh, filament manager plugin installed, which recently changed maintainer, maintainer, and um, you still have the old version that points to the old repository. Right now you would have to, you would get a notification. You would then have to react to this notification. Like it tells you to open the plugin manager, browse to the repository location of the, uh, or rather browse, uh, scroll through the repository browser. Now I, now I got it. Um, where the filament manager plugin is listed and then click on the reinstall button. In the future, what will happen is that Octoprint will pull in uh, some tiny uh, uh, JSON file from plugins.octoprint.org, which will tell Octoprint, by the way, uh, for the filament manager plugin, the update uh, configuration that you usually use should not uh, have these default values, this default repository where it points to, but rather the other one, this one that I tell you. So the default configuration in a plugin will get an overlay fetched from plugins.octoprint.org. And above that, yet there is anything that you have configured locally in config YAML should you have configured there. There's something there. So you always have full control what happens uh, if push comes to shove, but the defaults will change so that that way uh, we can just 
uh, write the new maintainer in this file um, and basically reconfigure the software update for you. And uh, instead of getting this notification that you need to change your maintainer, uh, that you need to reinstall a plugin, uh, your plugin will just tell you, hey, there is an update and fetch in the new version from the new maintainer. And uh, yeah, I think this will save everyone involved in these uh, maintainers, which is a lot of headaches, especially since these are very, very, very likely to uh, increase in the future. As we are um, looking at uh, uh, quite a number of plugins, which yeah appear to be abandoned now that everyone is asking the plugin maintainers to please um, add Python 3 support. So yeah, the goal is that with 1.5.0, that will be less of a headache for everyone, hopefully. Wish me luck that this actually works out. Um, I still might... Let me quickly think about something. Ah, oh, no, never mind. Huh. Yeah, I just realized a, pr a problem that you would still get a notification, but I can also limit the notifications to uh, to older Octoprint versions. So I would do something like if Octoprint version less than 1.5.0, then display a notification. Otherwise, just update the update URL, update the update URL. Oh, well, you know what I mean. Yeah, so this is something that I'm quite happy about because uh, initially I also thought it would be a quite difficult thing to accomplish, but it turns out it was fairly easy and was yeah doable in way less time than I, than I anticipated. Kind of makes me regret it that I did not do it on a live stream, but ah well. Um, yeah, that was one thing. And the other really, really cool thing I hope <laughs> for uh, plugin authors out there is uh, I mentioned release candidates earlier, right? And that they are very, very important to make Octoprint releases really stable. And um, I imagine that plugin developers have the same problem. They probably also want to be able to put out test versions of their plugins that people then can e automatically update to if they decide they want uh, uh, pre-releases. Um, and so far, while Octoprint in principle also supported this mechanism for plugins. There was no UI support for it. There was no way to the uh, to select a new, um, yeah, a new release channel of a plugin, and um, I changed that. So uh, and I just decided maybe it would be interesting if I could just show you how this looks now, even though this is mostly based on fake data still. But you should hopefully get uh, an idea of how this will work in the future. Um, I'm going to quickly switch over to the screen here, and I hope this works. Yeah. Okay. So this is my development instance with, as you see, a lot of uh, installed plugins that I refuse to update right now, and also some faked notices that I used for testing something earlier this week. But um, this is what I. No, sorry. This is what I wanted to show you. Um, yeah, so uh, this is something that I added to Octoprint 1.5.0. So um, you might remember that this this uh, maintenance, uh, this release channel selection for Octoprint used to reside in this menu here. I've removed it here. And instead, it is now also something that the plugin can be defined as well. So I've faked the filament. I've created a fake filament manager plugin here, which also defines a stable and a maintenance release channel. And uh, yeah, switching that will also re uh, re reload um, everything in the background, just like you are uh, used to it from uh, switching Octoprint release channel which will trigger a reload and then maybe show you a different version here that also happens with the plugins now and everything just works like it does with octoprint this currently requires that you have your plugin hosted on github and use github's release mechanism in order to try uh, to to push out your your plugins and i will also see that i improve the uh, the, the the documentation in that regard a bit but um, at least it's something, and I think the majority of plugins are also still hosted on GitHub. If there is a huge demand to also support something like the same for, for GitLab or so, I'm happily going to take pull requests. I personally don't use other systems uh, in a way that 
would qualify me to actually implement that for them. But yeah, uh, I'm sure we can work something out uh, collaboratively if there is demand. Yeah, um, that's what I wanted to show. Uh, and I hope this is something that uh, some plugin authors will be happy about. And the final thing that I was up to since return from my vacation is that uh, I gave a talk at uh, KDE's annual conference Academy 2020, which this year, obviously, for reasons uh, known to all of us, was held virtually. And this actually was my first keynote ever. So I got to, uh, yeah, basically open up the open up the, the conference itself with my talk, which was yeah, something that made me incredibly nervous bef uh, before uh, yeah, before the talk started, but uh, I managed, thankfully. Um, my talk was titled Adventures in Open Source Development, The Good, the Bad and the Ugly. And um, yeah, what I did talk about was basically my experiences with Octoprint, um, the things that I learned uh, over the course of almost eight years of maintenance and yeah, primarily sole maintenance of it. And um, yeah, and I, I also gave some summary of uh, what I consider the good, the bad and the ugly sides of working full time on a somewhat niche open source, um, apologies, <clears throat> uh, on a somewhat niche open source project for that long a time. Uh, I got some good feedback on that talk, which was a, a huge relief considering how nervous I was when giving it. Um, had a great time overall. We even did a small a social event via um, video chat, which was a bit weird, but uh, yeah, it worked somehow. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll put a link to the recording of that talk and the slides into the description uh, uh, of the final recording of this uh, live stream just in case you were interested in that. Uh, I also tweeted about it if you want to take a look at it before that. Um, yeah, so that was everything that I've been up to uh, the past two, three weeks, uh, minus the vacation. Um, uh, now the question is, what are the next steps? Uh, so I'm finally at a point where I no longer feel like I'm having to do catch up and trying to find my rhythm again with the uh, development of Octoprint after my vacation, which is nice because usually it takes way longer than uh, like two-ish weeks, which it has taken now, which is really, yeah, like, wow, whole new experience. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the, the idea is to get back into working on 2.0. Um, I still need to strip most of the Python 2 compatibility that is still in there. So the, the code base itself is now declared as Python 3 only, but there's so much uh, stuff still in there, which is, is part of the Python 2 compatibility or Python 2 and 3 compatibility workarounds that we put in for 1.4.0 that I now have to strip out again, but keep the Python 3 only stuff side of things. And maybe I also have to refactor the code here and there a bit to be more Python 3 or Py Python, Python 3 Pythonic. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I need to figure that out. And something else that I really hope to get back on track as well is um, uh, I mentioned it briefly, I think in the last one that I've been um, thinking about a new uh, front end for Octoprint with a modern JS framework instead of the quite dated bootstrap to and knockout and whatnot what, uh, that we currently use. Though, as I've said in the past, this, this is a bit tricky because I have to keep um, the whole plug-in situation in mind. Um, so whenever that will happen, before I continue with this train of thought, whatever, whenever that will happen, it will mean we will not do yeah, a, a big bang conversion like one day it's 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 the old interface and the next day it's a completely new one because all the plugins will have to be adapted to that. So um, yeah, uh, whatever happens will first coexist with the existing UI and probably see a way, way longer migration period than what we have now uh, with the Python 3 and uh, um, my migration. But yeah, it's something that needs to be done. And uh, it's something that I want to get done. But before I can do that, I first have to figure out what framework to use in the first place. And for that, I uh, bought a bunch of training courses for both React and Vue.js. And I've been uh, 
uh, yeah, long before my vacation, I had been working through them slowly but steadily. And then I just, yeah, with the release and everything, I simply could not find the time, the motivation, the whatnot again for that. But I hope to get back on that um, because, um, yeah, I really need to. I, I, I really want to first get my feet wet in both frameworks via a training course like that in order to figure out which one I want to go with. Uh, obviously also industry adaptation is something that plays a role here too, as does my, well, learning it, uh, I will, I mean, I obviously also will have to learn both and uh, I will not, I will try to make a good decision also that will make it yeah, at least not harder than it is right now for someone deciding to write their first plug in to get familiar with everything. So yeah, this is also something obviously that plays into the decision. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm really not sure if 2.0 uh, will already contain a new version of the plugin uh, of the of the front end, or if this is something that I will do uh, at a later major release. Um, it would be nice, uh, but yeah, I'm not promising anything at this point because as I said, I first have to make, I first have to collect enough experience to be able to do an informed technology decision. And then we can talk about uh, possible um, milestones and uh, planning and yeah. And obviously there's also a lot of other, sh yeah, more short-term stuff that I've been meaning to tackle for a while now. I still want to move the requests into the forum, uh, which right now clutter up the bug tracker and, um, yeah, really don't, yeah, really aren't that visible as I would like them to have towards the community so that they can weigh in on what they want and what they don't want. Um, and, uh, I basically just need to sit down and write a migration script that migrates from GitHub to Discord. Uh, I also at least managed uh, in the, yeah, I think that was around the time that I did the last uh, Octopreneur Air um, to set up a local uh, test forum in order to test against, uh, test the migration against uh, on, on my local uh, uh, nook here. But yeah, uh, still need some, some, some more work definitely before uh, I can even think about doing that. And um, yeah, another thing that I really want to get done is GitHub starring uh, for the plugins on the repository, uh, because I think that would also be a good indicator for all of you whether people actually do like a plugin or if just many of you install it, which is not necessarily the same thing. But yeah, that does not have that high of a priority. So there are way more pressing things that I need to tackle first, which I mentioned. And yeah, but, but still, it's something that I would really like to see. Okay. Um, now that brings us to a quick look at the stats and I'm going to switch you over again. So, um, this is the stats of the last seven days. Not much actually has changed in the numbers here in general, um, apart, um, uh, compared to, yeah, basically the past four months or so. We still, in seven days, we still see around 65,000 uh, instances um, and total time printed are 30, th uh, where 83 years over the past seven days, which yeah, also is roughly in the same ballpark. Obviously, uh, contrary to the last time, we no longer have one for O at the top of the food chain here, but rather one for two, though there are still quite a number of one for two uh, for O instances that have so far refused to update. Please update. Um, and also the, the worldwide, worldwide distribution hasn't changed much either. The printed hours per version over time also still look very, very familiar, but there is something that has changed. And I'm going to switch you over to, I think, yeah, to this top, which shows it a bit better. So with the release of uh, Octoprint 141 and also one subsequently 142, the, the, the timing when the Python version and also the other environmental information from your Octoprint instance get, gets reported to the anonymous usage tracking changed. Um, before this version, it was only on startup of the server. So yeah, 
depending on how long your server stays running at at one uh, at at yeah without being shut down or something that could be yeah quite a long time ago and with 141 i changed this to report it uh, every 24 hours so i now see so 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 if you have opted into the anonymous usage, usage tracking every 24 hours i will now see which python version you are running and this explains the increase that we saw here but what happened here yeah well this is the python 3 update script that charlie created that i mentioned earlier and what you can see here is that before this, this script was rolled out, uh, or rather was announced on a block, we had 600 and, uh, yeah, 630 Python 3 instances roughly per day. Not necessarily the 603, not the same 630, but like something like that. And um, after this, this script was pulled out, the number yeah, increased until yesterday we reached 2,300 instances. So this is more than a triple, uh, more, more than triple the amount. And don't get confused by this not looking like this is three times the number of these. This is a logarithmic scale. Uh, so we have here something a little bit under 1k and here we are already at something about midway to 5k. So um, yeah, logarithmic scale just to maybe give you an idea how this looks in in, in a linear scale and why this, why this is logarithmic because it is otherwise a bit hard to see anything here because of this huge number of python 2 instances um so yeah the logarithmic scale here really helps to uh, get a better idea of that was wrong that was right yeah 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 uh, gets, gives a better idea of changes even for the underdog or still the underdog here. The goal is obviously to have the yellow line over overtake the green one, but I expect this will still take quite a while. Um, and Jim just Jim just suggested that it would be a good uh, use of the Grafana GitHub data source plugin to have release annotations overlaid on your graphs, on my graphs. I agree, that is actually something, I still have to look into this uh, this plugin because that really sounds interesting also to get an idea about, um, yeah, increase in bug reports and all that uh, coupled to certain events that uh, are related to the project in general. Yeah. Um, but I still haven't found the time to take a look, sadly. All right. Um, another thing that I wanted to show you is this, which made me go, what the fuck? Why? <laughs> I'm not going to say the F word here, but you can imagine what it was. Um, this is the number of unique instances seen between uh, within the last 60 days, so as far back as the tracking will go. And we are looking at over 170,000 instances. Before the pandemic, this number here was more in, more in the ballpark of maybe 70,000. So I'm like, okay, things have happened here. Um, great, it just increased. <clears throat> uh, needless to say, on the one side, this makes me really proud. On the other side, this is also a bit scary considering that, yeah, um, Octoprint is, yeah, I, I mean, it used to be back to me it used to be a pet project that i did because i did not want to have my printer sitting here right next to me and and producing noise and fumes for hours on end and this is the only reason this whole project even exists or at least this project in this in this in this reality i mean someone else would probably gotten the same idea and then implemented it differently but the reason why octoprint as it is exists is because i had an itch to scratch and i scratched it and then suddenly it mutated took over my life um and uh, here i am talking to you <laughs> um and the fact that so many people are running it and this is only like the the minimum number because not everyone has the anonymous usage tracking uh, enabled and I only see people see instances there who uh, which have it enabled and the the yeah the the un I, I have no idea how many unconfirmed instances are out there but uh, a rough ballpark ballpark estimate based on the um 
on the data that I got from the PyWheels project after the after Octoprint 140 was released because they suddenly saw, saw a huge spike in the downloads of their packages. Um, uh, yeah, the, suggests that the number might be 10 times as high and this is like, oh, okay, cool. So yeah, hi, <laughs> I'm the one responsible for this. Uh, it's a bit weird having this huge responsibility on my shoulders, but hey, let's make the best of it, shall we? Um, Okay, so that was what I wanted to show you with regards to the stats. Usually I would now say we go to the Q&A segment, but as I said, there are no questions in the backlog left unanswered because you didn't send in any um, on the on the Patreon $5 and above level. So yeah, this is not my fault. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm going to take a quick look over the at the live chat, which yeah, there is also no questions there. So yeah. In case you want to ask something now, those of you watching this live, please do. I'm going to take a quick sip from my uh, from my water bottle. Mm. And um, give you some time in, uh, in case you want to ask something. Also, hi, Matthew. Welcome to the hobby. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm just going to quickly do some of the usual um, wrap up stuff now. And in case there are any questions that are thrown into the live chat, I will still answer them before I completely go away. But yeah, so um, the, rec the next regular um, Octoprint on air will probably be something like mid, uh, mid October. Uh, as usual, I will post the appointment on Patreon at the $5 or above level, as always. And uh, we'll also link the, the, the form for handing in uh, Q&As, uh, uh, Q uh, questions for the Q&A segment there again. Please. So, yeah, uh, in hopes that it will be used this time. Um, and we have two questions. Uh, John asks, how important do you think it is to upgrade to Python 3? Very important, because Python 2 uh, stopped being officially supported by the Python uh, people on January 1st. So uh, it's going away. Uh, that doesn't mean it stops working, but there will no, no longer be any kind of uh, security updates for it or anything. And uh, Octoprint will also switch to Python 3 exclusively uh, with 2.0. And the thing is, the earlier every one of you upgrades to Python 3, with the current Octoprint releases, the earlier we can find plugins that are not yet compatible, um, the faster we can hopefully adopt them uh, or, or find alternatives or something like that. So um, yeah, the more people update now, uh, the less painfully it will be for everyone who hasn't yet updated later. Um, and this is the, the idea here, why uh, also why this script was created. And um, if finding problems with the ecosystem is not something that motivates you to upgrade. I can tell you something else. Um, Octoprint happens to run definitely more performant under Python 3. Uh, the web interface is more responsive because the server side is more responsive in all in all. Python 3 is faster than Python 2. It's not like uh, several majorities or something like that, but uh, there is a significant increase that you will notice and um, there are also and this is something that is really of interest to me there are also certain language features that uh, will allow some stuff that so far was not possible in, in uh, to do in octoprint which i'm really looking forward to um okay uh, Jim asks, does the new backup complete event trigger on command line interface commands? Uh, no, it doesn't. And that is in the documentation, which you didn't read, which I now know. Sorry, couldn't resist. But yeah, I think I didn't even put the event uh, bus into the command line. So I think it doesn't get uh, instantiated there. And uh, also plugins do not get instantiated then, then uh, unless they are command line plugins. So um, it, or unless they are a specific plugin or at least i'm fairly fairly sure they do not get instantiated um so you you would not be able to react to it there but um 
we might be able to at least trigger the event but yeah that that would mm. we could look into at least making the event boost work for plugins so that you could get an event handler called in your plugin when the command line stuff is run but this yeah this is not something for 150 i think because that will uh, mean quite extensive changes but yeah um Yanda asked, there seems to be the most instances located in North Europe. What host software is used elsewhere or are they not using any host software? Um, let's take a look at the stats again, maybe, because uh, I do not agree um, with this observation. Um, so the thing is, uh, this roughly corresponds, the, the North American pattern here roughly corresponds with uh, the pop population density as well. The same goes for Europe. Um, the same goes for um, for for uh, Australia and for uh, Southeast, uh, yeah, at least for 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 Japan and also I think roughly for these parts here of Southeast Asia. Um, the I don't I do not know about the spread of three D printers that and and also Octoprint in Africa. Um, I do see that there is quite some stuff happening in South America, but also this part here is fairly blank. I'm not sure what they use. I do not know if they use any. I cannot tell you that. But what I can tell you is that my suspicions are that the huge blank map over here in China is also due to the uh, Chinese black, uh, Chinese black, Chinese firewall. Um, the thing is, you have to be able to reach the tracking server in order to report into the tracking server and the tracking server is yeah i do not know if they if, if it is reachable necessarily from there but yeah i cannot tell you what else they use um and speaking of uh, this question um you also ask if i look at other host software to get ideas for octoprint i do not uh, i frankly have not run another piece of host software ever since I started working on Octoprint. Um, the thing is, I do not want to get inspired or get ideas because I can already see the shitstorm in front of me where someone then starts pointing fingers at me and um, telling me I stole from some, uh, stole, stole something or somewhat. And I do not want that. I do not want to risk that. And frankly, I would rather follow my own intu in intuition and the request from the community to build stuff instead of copying. So yeah, this is what I do. Um, and John asks, do you think we would get more people involved in your on air streams if it was done over the weekend? No. And I'm absolutely sure about that because I used to do them on the weekends. I used to do them on Saturdays and I used to even do them on very, very early Sundays, my time in order to give the Eastern hemisphere a chance. And the participation was roughly the same as it is now. So I decided, well, I can just as well then do it on a weekday at the evening in the evening and have a, a proper weekend um, which frankly I need because when I had one of these streams yeah I mean okay they only take up an hour but it's just not a weekend day then it's not a relaxing day if you know you still at 5 p.m you still have to do a stream and it's also not a relaxing day if on a Sunday morning you had your alarm clock ring you out of the bed at 6 a.m um, yeah, so I for a while in these cases I did it that I um, worked through this Saturday or Sunday, completely took it as a work day, uh, and then took off Monday or Friday. Uh, but yeah, that was also really iffy because it usually meant something like in case of Saturday it meant I had to do a, a, a six day week and it really it didn't change much in the viewing numbers so i decided it's simply not worth it um it's it's frankly it frankly does not it is frankly not worth it to get maybe one person more if uh if if i yeah i feel like a zombie for for one week for that uh, and build bugs into octoprint um so i tried a lot uh, in the end, I figured out, well, if attendance is 
roughly the same across the board regardless of what i do i might as well do it at a point which is most convenient to me and which i can schedule um best and not have to forego on visiting friends okay i mean obviously right now visiting friends is certainly something that usually is uh, prevented by the pandemic but back then <laughs> uh, that was something i usually did on saturdays um and on sundays but yeah so as i said i've tried it uh yeah and uh john you probably remember either the 30th octoprint on air that i did which was completely public uh, he's just said that uh, when he's joined, he joined, he met 60 or 70 people watching live. And there was one Octoprint on air which had this high attendance. And that was the one uh, at the height of the lockdown here where I said, okay, um, we all need to get away from the screen, uh, from the from, from, from outside. And uh, just, yeah, looking at, at, into at our walls is boring. So I figured I might as well do the usually Patreon exclusive live stream that is Octoprint on air. So the recording is public for everyone, but the live stream is usually exclusive because yeah, I figure it is like a goodie to get direct access to me that way and be able to uh, get questions answered and all that and also get like this live feed of development information and all that. Um, this is a perk. This is the perk at the $5 level. So it usually is uh, yeah, not made a public stream, but this one I did uh, publicly, uh, I announced that before I um, pushed out notifications on social media and everything. And that had like this huge giant attendance as a consequence, but that's, that was the outlier. Um, the usual attendance here is really, uh, yeah, like way last, uh, way less people. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't last year, John, because um, I would remember that. I've never seen 60 to 70 people watching any of my live streams apart from uh, this one that I did publicly. And even the code and chats rarely go above 40. So yeah, I mean, I can get, I, I do get it. I also rarely watch live streams myself, I gotta admit, because usually I simply cannot schedule around it, uh, around them. Um, I rather watch the recordings afterwards and the recordings are watched. So everything is fine. And I don't, under, uh, don't, don't get this as me holding a grudge or anything. It's just, um, yeah, I mean, I do them. Uh, I'm happy for everyone that watches them live. Uh, I will continue to probably uh, stay, um, uh, on, on Friday evening on Friday evening, my, uh, time, um, schedule for them. And yeah, that's that, uh, yeah. And uh, for every, everyone who wants to see me publicly embarrassing myself, there's always the uh, <laughs> golden shed one. Okay. Um, I think that was the last question and we are also at almost an hour, which fits perfectly. <laughs> In that case, yeah. Um, let me just quickly wrap this up for good. Um, yeah, thank you all for watching this. Those of you who are watching it, li watched it live, thank you for being there and uh, making the live chat not as deserted as it could be otherwise. Um, I hope it was interesting. I hope you uh, got some insights into the development of Octoprint. And um, until next time, uh, please uh, wear a mask, stay healthy, and I wish you all happy printing. Bye.